stage tonight. Um, I get in trouble, as usual, so I want to get this out of the way. Follow us at sagegrill.com, facebook.com slash sagegrill, and twitter.com slash sagegrill. He's been practicing. I, I got it all out. Perfect. Okay. So anyway, Chrissy, um, tell us about, you know, you, how we got like, it's five It's a really generations. long story. Yeah, well, we only have a couple minutes. Okay. Well, I'll do it in the next one then. So, um, basically, Grandpa married well, and I was born lucky. But my family heritage goes back in the wine industry in Napa five generations, thus the name Five Vintners and the Five Tally Marks on the label. Um, but great-great-grandpa was Jacob Berenger. He and his brother started Berenger Brothers. They built that beautiful wine house if you've ever been up there, and they really were instrumental in getting the wine industry going in Napa. Um, and then his son made wine through the Prohibition for medicinal and sacramental purposes, right? Because there were so many sick and religious people then. Yeah, sure. Um, and once we came out of that, my grandpa, who was basically a bootlegger in Ross, um, in Marin County, um, the boys had met him during Prohibition and said, hey, you're a hard worker, a fun guy. Would you like to come get the wine you're going again? So we said, sure. Came up, fell in love with the business and Martha Jane Berenger. So I ended up, they let him marry into the family. So that's how the Raymond name, his name is Roy Raymond, that's how the Raymond name got into the wine business. Fast forward, that was 1936, they married. Fast forward about 35 years, we have a series of deaths in the family. Great aunts are dying. We're paying inheritance tax over and over again. My family really wants to stay in the business. The rest of the Berengers don't. We start Raymond Vineyards, um, sell Berenger, take our proceeds, start Raymond Vineyards on Zinfandel Lane, just south of St. Helena, so about three miles away from where great-great-grandpa you know, started his winery. And that's where I really grew up, you know, learning the trade. And um, I've done everything at the winery. I've sold the wine in the retail room as an underage kid, bottled a heck of a lot of wine, worked in the cellar, dried the yeah, like, <laughs> It's even worse. Yeah. I rebuilt pallets, wood pallets that were broken. We don't want to waste pallets. Wash barrels, you know. Yeah. My sister and I used to cry while we were working and wonder why our dad hated us so much. But in the end, I think it was great training for what I do now. So I came back to Raymond after school and kicking up my heels and that sort of stuff and started selling wine for Raymond Vineyards. Burnt myself to a frazzle and pretty much renegotiated myself into production. And I just got trained by his assistant winemaker for about three years on the nuts and bolts of wine making and what happens. And fell in love with it and uh, with lots of badgering from my dad. He just kept saying, you know, you need to start your own brand, you need to start your own brand. So I finally did in 2001, and here we are, Good 10 year. years later. Year. Woo! Congratulations. Yeah. So I make Sauvignon Blanc, Zin, Syrah, and Cab. I've tasted her wines before, they're pretty awesome. Why are these particular varietals? What's the taste of Sauvignon Blanc for you? Tell us. I love, um, well, I love Sauvignon Blanc. It's YouTube only gives us 10 minutes. If I uh, had to stick an ID in, you know, it would be the soft long. Long. Cool. So that's why it's soft long. And actually, I have a friend who had an acre of weeds in his front yard. And I, I went and story. asked him if I could plant a vineyard in his front yard. So I have about 815 vines. And I use his well. And I pay him a case of wine a year. And I have a 30-year lease. I have, well, I planted it in 2002. So I'm down, I'm so, down so it costs you 30 years. cases? Yeah. <laughs> and he doesn't even drink it, it's for his wife. So, I Thank the deal. Yeah. Um, and what, then. What's Napa wine go for by the acre? You know, it depends who's buying the land, but, you know, a lot. Yeah. Way more than I can afford. Probably, you know, with grapes on it in a desirable location. It's not good cab land, it's very moist, so that, that's the Sauvignon Blanc, but, you know, probably like two and a quarter, 250,000. That's a lot. That's an expensive case of wine. Yeah. So luckily, <laughs> that's why this is so affordable. Yes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but the area is really heavy soils, lots of clay, and uh, it's really good for Sauvignon Blanc. It gives a lot of that citrus blossom aroma. There's a good mineral quality. Yeah, it's a lot of mineral. Yeah. It's kind of an old style. It's almost New Zealand. Mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of well, it's stainless steel. Yeah. It's, no. Oh, okay. It's super bright and yeah. crisp. Really, really citrusy. Okay, so the person you guys never see behind the camera saying, hurry the heck up. So, all right, so, anyway. That, wait, wait. I was going to dump it out, but I can drink it. You drink it. Okay. Because that's your word. We have uh, red glasses here, so. All right, so, Zen then next. Forward to Zen. And Zen is a wine that we made at Raymond Vineyards in the 70s. But Napa is a hard place to grow Zen. Okay. So my dad ended up ripping that out. But I really love it. Um, I don't love Napa by itself though, so this 
65% Sonoma, the Dry Creek fruit, and 35% Napa fruit. Just to give a little more structure that could. Yeah, it has know. a lot of structure. We just did two Dry Creek Zinfandels last week. You can tell the Napa fruit is in this. Yeah. You can tell the Napa fruit is in this. Were those more jammy or? Not necessarily. It was um, wine gorilla okay. that we tasted. Good sins, but that's all he makes. Yeah. Um, really but different, I, different stock. I like, you know, I'm a very um, food oriented winemaker. I'm a food oriented person who <laughs> love to cook and eat. And so all these wines have just a lot of acid. You know, it's very bright. It's kind of, it just, Old you can drink stuff. a lot of it because it keeps cleansing your palate over and over again. Old world stuff. Yeah. Or feminine style for Zen, too. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is pretty bright alcohol, fruit. but you can't sex it. Very good. Surprising you didn't make a special one here. Oh, you're making a rosé? Yeah. Well, I'm going to make it something a clarity, maybe a little bit something. It'll be very cool. So this is a 2003 Syrah. Right here. This was a monster wine in its youth, and I just now like it. Like the last year or so, it's been an, a good wine. And you have, what, like three whole cases of this left? Three whole cases. And where are those three cases? I have six cases? bottles at home, though, if you want to come there and come. But we have... You have three cases, and where are those? Oh, yeah, they're here. They're Same here. screw up. They're here. They're in here. Yeah, so this is... This will stain your teeth. This what? This is big. It is. Two. And it's Carneros fruit. Tony Truchard is the grower. And um, I fell in love with Syrah in the Central Coast. You know, I lived there for a while with my husband, Kirk. And... I thought, you know, I really want to make one of those, and we had never, I'd never made one at the winery. They had made a little bit of Pinot Noir, but they never made a Syrah, so I thought, okay, I'm going to give it a go. And it's such a teenager -y wine, like it always changes, and you never really know what you have on your hands, and you like it one time you go to the barrel, and then the next time you won't like it, so it kind of irritated me as a wine, but <laughs> in the end, I, you know, Whatever. Eight up. years later, I like the wine, you know, so we'll stick with it. Amazing white pepper finish. Too. But again, um, yeah, and very like even measure on the oak. Yeah. Know, yeah. Not very much. No, it's going on there. And you know what's really nice about this is that we don't get to a lot of the wines that we drink in California and in the restaurant business are so young. And it's nice to have the age on this because it really gives the quality yeah. and the character. But even, you know, if you look at the color, like, you know, you, you wouldn't be able to tell that's a no, no, it's no. The, And that's the acidity, you know, and I think that's one of the things that makes the wine really hold up, up over time. Yeah. We better hurry up. Okay. I'm getting yelled at over here. Last but not least. Me, he's a slave driver. Silently yelled at. So before I forget, we'll knock it out now. Don't forget, follow us at sagegrill.com. Facebook.com slash sagegrill <laughs> and Twitter.com slash sagegrill. Okay, Chrissy. Bring oh, 06 home. cap. Uh, pretty much all Rutherford and St. Helena fruit. I mean, you can make wine in Napa without making a Cabernet, so, you know, I have to do it. Awesome. But I also feel like yeah. if I had to drink the whole vintage, I'd be happy. 700 cases or so. Sweet. I can do it. Um, There's three here. Great yeah. balance of acid and tan. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's again a real easy to drink, ready, approachable. That's awesome. Lots of earthy Rutherford, St. Helena soil in there. Well, thank you very much. Chrissy, thanks for joining us. Sorry if you can't be here, but hopefully you can join us for our next wine tasting. Thanks. Bye-bye.